Hey everybody, the banks are getting overextended. And there are some investors that have been following this since the GFC, the Great Financial Crisis, back in 2008. That's when uh, supposedly the S hit the F. But it looked bad, but it drug on. And these uh, people that are worth billions of dollars can only, you know, they can only see what they see. They're like, okay, well, this should happen. Well, everybody underestimated the Fed, including me for sure. Yeah. And then it rocked on, and then we had uh, the, the last crisis, the pandemic. The can always gets kicked down the road. Yeah, and they pulled us out of that. Yep. And the same billionaires, I mean, these guys, uh, John Paulson's one of them. She's going to get into the story in a minute. But just before she does, know that he's worth $3 billion. <laughs> they're, they're not stupid. They're not wrong. They're just early. A lot like uh, most really good investors. Their timing's bad. Uh, but the contrarian investors are early and they sit and wait. And I know John Paulson is a huge, huge bull on gold. And if anybody's interested, Stacy is a broker for, for Miles Franklin. And we have had, what would you say, 60 to 70% of the people that are buying right now are new. Yes, first, first time, time buyers. buyers. And I love out. talking to you guys, by the way. Absolutely love it. Call me, 318-564-5823. I love talking to you guys. I'll put it in the description and I'll pin it in the comments. Give her a call. She'll walk you through the process. It's super easy. You can buy any amount you want. I will help you get anything you need. And because once you once you feel it and you you know you hold it, you'll know you're holding with the multi billionaires. Yeah, are I agree. Holding. Well, let's get real quick though. So let's let's we'll go back to what I could do for now. But let's get John Paulson. So he actually came out with a quote that said, "Gold prices are going to rise." Because the Fed is going to fail getting the inflation back to 2% and gold is an inflation hedge. Quote. I mean, I don't know how much more you can get better than that when you have someone of that, that knows well, that much. Of them. So many of them. Like all like Rick Rule, Doug Casey, uh, Jim Records. All the, all the gold bulls are just, it's this time and it could not be this time. Just get, Here's the strange thing. They could kick the can down the road. I don't know. It might be the last time uh, because they're tightening and it's going to absolutely crush the economy as inflation is starting to sit in, not to mention food shortages. Yes. Uh, and what's going to happen is, now I'm going to do a little prediction here. What's going to happen is they're, when things get so bad, just like it did in England the other day, when things get so bad, they're going to say, hey, the pensions are going belly up. We've got to print money. Turn it on. Okay, everybody gets a STEMI check. Because the markets have pulled back all the way back to 2020, all the way back to when everything shut down. As soon as that happens, they're going to say, turn the money printers on and give everybody money. And the smart, savvy investors are going to buy gold and silver if they can find it. We're struggling getting a hold of it. Yeah. The whole world is. Yeah, it is. And so I want to talk about another, Lawrence Summers, which everybody knows about him. He's a contrarian, a communist. If you look him up, he's... A communist? Like, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pop you on the head. So I struggle pronouncing words, and he makes fun of me. It's okay. I do. I struggle reading. All the time. That's why she reads all the time. <laughs> but he said, he even said there were tremors. He calls them tremors that were back in 2007 before the whole thing happened in 2008, etc., and he, I watched a video today about him. It was very interesting. And he said that he is seeing the same tremors that happened in 2007 happening now. He said there's always tremors before an earthquake. It never is an earthquake right off the bat. You always see the tremors first. And he said that is what he is seeing in the financial market. And if somebody like that says something, I pay attention. I'm like, okay, what is he talking about? And it was a very interesting video of how he saw the things coming down the pipe. And I think it's, and he thinks rates will go higher. It's just going to affect certain things. And matter of fact, is I talked to a former uh, commercial lender, and I won't give his name. That's up to him. That's his privacy. But he said, take a look at the Credit Suisse. I think I'm saying that correctly because I think I screw up names pretty badly. Yeah, and it's in Switzerland. And he thinks that that's possibly is the next uh, Lehman Brothers. And because if you look at their stock right now, it is down 60% year to date. And so I kind of did a little research. And they are part of the bulge bracket. 
and the bulge bracket is like I don't know 9 10 11 banks or whatever that are across globally and they do all these multinational investors but here's the kicker they fund governments they loan to the governments that's pretty and, heavy yeah that's that a is big and they're down 60%. They're down 60%. And the next one he mentioned, he said, take a look at, is the Deutsche, Deutsche Germany? Deutsche Bank. Deutsche. Oh, see, there I go. I screw up a thing. And <laughs> I screw it up again. They're down, I think, only like 32% or something. But he's mainly mentioned the one in Switzerland. And I talk to people all the time on the phone when you guys call me. And I cannot tell you the number of people that have said, I've talked to my grandparents and they went through the Great Depression, and they're even saying the same thing. There is no rule book, there is no roadmap, there is nothing to tell us how to get through this. And I jokingly say, Chris Ty, and I say, we're muddling through this together, because there is no right or wrong. When people call me and ask me questions daily about, what do you think is gonna happen with this? What do you think is gonna happen with this? It's all speculation. If anybody tells you they know what's gonna happen, they are lying or just being a know-it-all because they don't know it they do not know me and jack had this conversation yep. today he said nobody knows what's going to happen no. we're in uncharted territory yep. unprecedented uh, you know all the yep. whole you hear that stuff all the time unprecedented i've never heard that so much since 2020 <laughs> <laughs> it, but we are it is true it is. we're here and, and we've never seen this amount of uh, qe we've never seen uh these kind of rate hikes since paul volcker and right. And I was just a little kid then, you know, if anybody uh, remembers that, put that in the comments for me. I, I would, I like hearing from you old guys that really remember the gas lines. We had people that remembered yeah. paying uh, silver dimes for gas. That's happening now though. Can I interject just sure. a second? All right. So based on, we talk about gold and silver and all this kind of stuff all the time. Well, I've had a lot of people reach out to me in the last couple of weeks that are real time in the United States. Actually, they're taking gold and silver, mainly silver, for go goods and services. They're doing everything from vendors, which are at fairs and markets and all that kind of stuff. They actually have on their, on their vendors, like if they're selling hot dogs or corn dogs or whatever, they're saying, hey, we will take junk, silver, in lieu of cash. I'm having mom and pop gas stations. They call me and they tell me, absolutely, they are taking silver in lieu of cash. And they'll, they'll, they'll because they said we don't have a lot, a lot of funds on hand, and so we we said, hey, we'll we'll, we'll take silver in, in in lieu of the cash. I'm having farmers, farmers. I had I don't know how many farmers call me the other day within a week time frame. All of them said they are taking silver in lieu of cash, and they're doing it for stock, feed, wheat, wheat, grain, all this kind of stuff. And I said, how are you factoring it? And they said, because we do the stock price, or the, not sorry, stock, the spot price, add a little bit extra for premium, and that's how we're factoring in. So right now in the United States, people are literally bargaining with silver. They're gonna start adding more for premium because the spot prices that are manipulated aren't gonna keep up with demand. And you know, uh, that's how they're gonna go past the spot price. That's how, when people want it, they're gonna pay you know what it's worth to yeah. them yeah to them and if yeah. they're concerned about their uh, wealth and their well-being because if you're sitting on a bunch of cash you're essentially sitting on an ice cube that's melting out from under you it's eroding away if you have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank it will buy probably about eighty thousand dollars worth of goods compared to a year or two ago think about it like that if you if you mm -hmm. if you've got a pile of money and you're banking on retiring on that uh, what happens when we get to the bottom of this tightening? I can tell you, they're going to print money. Bloomberg actually said perhaps about this tidal wave of cash that we've had coming in because we've had all this printing money. It says it's been flooding the markets because of this during these easy past few years. So it said because the pace of this year's valuation destruction is still alarming. <coughs> Because it has literally devalued our dollar because we have literally had, well, I don't know how much, trillions, millions. I don't know how much has been printed with all the stimulus checks. All well, we the... were printing almost a trillion a month until they start tightening. We were, uh, we were approaching a trillion a month. And then what is what the latest, what is it, the uh, affordable, or not the affordable, the, uh, the uh, I can't even think. Inflation Reduction, reduction Act. Act. Thank you. I don't know how much more that's going to be in putting out there in the and there's stores. another way to look at this uh even people that are racking up this credit card debt uh that is also creating money that's creating money and, and putting it into the economy 
it's, it, it's, you know, if you think about it, they're buying stuff with a credit card that's actually cash out. Whether they pay it back or not, that's another thing. It is. And there's a lot of people that are living off credit cards. If you've got credit card debt, please get out of it. But <clears throat> there's more and more liquidity being flooded in the mm -hmm. system. And the smart, intelligent, wealthy investors, and I'm not saying if you don't have precious metals, you're not intelligent or smart. Probably hadn't woke up yet, but you will. And once you do, you won't be able to not see it. Once you wake up to this crap, there is no, you know, not seeing it. You're not going to be able to forget about it. I've run into a lot of people in California that had no idea. They didn't know what the world economic F was. You can't say that anymore. I learned a lot about algorithms and how they're censoring too. Uh, they didn't know what that was. They didn't know about the crap that's coming. They had no clue, none whatsoever. Just like, no, I, I thought everything was fine. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like th there's so much happening in such a short amount of time. Yes. And the main thing is, like we say all the time, just don't stick your head in the sand. Okay, so, but I want to go back real quick and touch on what you just said. And you told me this today, and I never really thought about this. When you buy with a credit card, Talk, say that again, because when you said that, I'm like, I never it injects really... money into the economy. And yeah, it's uh, the so same you, as printing money. So you're basically so so when someone is going and purchasing with a credit it's card, it's inflationary. You're inflating the dollar. Well, you're def. What do you? What would it's you inflation. say? It's yeah, inflation. Yeah, you're adding money. You're adding you're, money to the economy yeah. because that's not money that you that's, have. Well, that's how money's created. It's really. It's Stop really... and think about that for a second, though. When you said that, that made me pause, and I had to wrap my head around that for a second. Well, when you go get a loan you're actually adding to the money. They don't have the money. No, they don't. They just give it to you. Out of thin air. Like, yep. okay, and yep. you, you owe us interest on money that right. we created. Right, right. <laughs> so that's Same how money's created, by debt. You know, we're a debt-based economy. And uh, yeah, all of it, uh, any loan. It's, so it's very strange. Start thinking about it like that, and that'll kind of help you start to see things, and you'll start to kind of denominate goods and services and something else with whatever you choose mm -hmm. uh but uh, you know asset for assets it's kind of think of it as like bartering yep uh because there will be a day when the dollar absolutely collapses and they could do look they're going to do a whole bunch of stuff they're going to do cbdc's they're going to do fed coin they're going to do uh, there's no telling what crypto do there's just it's wild it's a speculation that i choose to dabble in but when it comes to really trying to retain the wealth you have and trying to pay your property taxes. A lot of people have gold and silver to pay their property taxes. They do. And that's a, that was, when I started learning about it about, I don't know, 12 years ago or so, uh, it was really eye opening. It's like, wow, that's, that's legit. Yeah. That's how, you know, because yep. they're going to try to tax you out of your land. They're going to try to tax you out of anything. We're headed towards socialism. Just so you know, I know this is completely off topic. 49% of millennials welcome socialism. They think it's a good idea. Ah. Oh. Generation Z is more than that. I can't remember. I think it, it might be 40 uh, millennials and 49 Generation Z. I can't remember, but it's really wild, the people that are welcoming this social, uh, you know, the people. When you start hearing the people, like China, the, the people's liberation army, the people should own, the people should own all the oil. The people, not companies. It's going to sound really, really good, but just know it's straight from the pits of hell. But I don't think, truthfully, <coughs> I don't think these generation x and z and millennials and all that i don't think they really understand the true meaning of socialism because i, re I researched the other day and the real true meaning is completely different than what they're being taught or what it's the propaganda it's, is being out there it's marxism you should check out karl marx uh, he was the people that have been murdered uh the millions I'm talking, there's no telling, maybe 100 or 200 million people. It's hard to say. I can't remember because there's so many people that adopted this Marxism, socialism. He did. Because uh, when the people, when, when the governments are in control of anything, there's only a few people that are in control of the government. It's true. And they're easily corrupted with greed. It's very, very obvious that's what's going on. They're all sociopaths. And <clears throat> uh, when that happens, it's all over. That's it. Talk to anybody that came from that yep. and they never, never want to go back.
No, they don't. We're going down a rabbit hole now, but I completely agree. You read any kind of books, you read about Germany, you read about North Korea, you read about Russia. I've read several books, and when you read those books from real people that have escaped from that, heck, just from Venezuela the other day, those three brothers are escaped. When you read from that kind of stuff and you see what they lived through, that was absolutely, socialism, absolutely. Marxism. That was absolutely that, uh, that president, uh, he actually died of cancer. Uh, Hugo, was that his name? Hugo, yeah. Hugo Chavez. Uh, he was 100% uh, socialist. He groomed the guy next to after him, and he was even worse. And those people were starving. They're still, that place is a train wreck. It absolutely fails every time. It is the 100% wrong move every single time. Stay yes. away from it. Don't be tricked. They're going to try to trick the masses, and I have a feeling they're going to succeed. But maybe... Just maybe, this is my hope for, and this is the end of the video, it's getting so dark out here we barely can't see, <laughs> but maybe we have one more time to prosper and the people, the, the believers, the, the people that hold precious metals, God's money that he put in the ground for us to use. When I say God's money, I don't mean he uses money. That's stupid. The, it, gold is actually pavement in heaven, <laughs> okay? But I think he put it in the ground for people to use and to trade with. And the government always has a way to step in and screw it up. They always get in there and create some kind of fiat that's backed by nothing. It's always backed by gold and silver first, and then it gets whittled down. Or oh, on a gold standard, well, let's just go to like a like a forty percent. Let's just back at forty percent, and then eventually, like they did in nineteen seventy one, they say, no, we're not going to stay on the gold standard because we can't print enough money. We we can't print enough money. We couldn't to pay our debts. Yeah, and so they want to be able to print money yeah. to make their self rich, and they want to own it all, and just know uh, I don't plan on taking part in any of that. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think truth, all this has come together, that all we've talked to you guys and all the people that have called in, we there's some amazing people in the United States of America and across the world. Mm -hmm. There's some amazing, I love talking to you guys, and there's, there's, there's hope for us, and I think there's a really great future for us and we're just going to keep moving forward and muddling through this and we're going to come out we're going to come out ahead i really have faith i, do I believe it i do too i think so too it's not this time i really believe it's not this time it's so, going to look really bad at first but if you're not part of the problem you'll be part of the solution uh if you're looking for rental properties they're on the way don't get in a hurry just wait. It's going to look so bad. It's going to, I'm not going to want to invest either. I'm just like everybody else. I don't, it's like, oh, it's bad. Crawl up, ball up, and hard knot. Just, but we're going to start buying rental properties when it looks like it's the end of the world. Or whatever comes along. But, yeah. Let's, that's it. Okay. Guys, have an awesome, awesome day. We'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs>